Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is David Gibson. David Gibson is the director of Globe Sound Healing Institute in San Francisco, offering state-approved certificate programs in sound healing and therapy. David is the author of the book, The Complete Guide to Sound Healing. He's also a top-selling producer of sound healing music. His music is in many hospitals around the country including Boston General and UC Medical Center. He also runs the Sound Therapy in Center at the Institute, offering 15 different types of sound healing treatments. David, David is the founder of the Sound Healing Research Foundation, designed to help bring sound healing into the mainstream. He has also set up the Medical Sound Association to figure out how to cure every disease in the world. This is so cool. He has created over 2,500 exercises for children based on all of the books on brain development for children at every age. Now you can find out more about David Gibson and his wonderful work at several websites, soundhealingcenter.com, soundtherapycenter.com, soundoflove.com, and soundhealingresearchfoundation.org. Welcome, David Gibson. Hi, what a pleasure to be here. So David Gibson, you're involved in many aspects of sound music for healing. How does sound work for healing? Oh, well, the most basic aspect of sound at all levels is the difference between chaotic vibration and <clears throat> stable, consistent, which is peace. Chaotic vibration is like fear. Ah! Change my sound settings here. Ah! Or anger. Or anxiety. Or pain. Or stress. Ah! Versus the vowels, which are. Anybody can feel the difference, right? And that's it. So it's all about overcoming these chaotic vibrations with stable, consistent, peaceful vibrations. And that would be the vowels, crystal bowls, Tibetan bowls, tuning forks, any drone instrument, a lot of a lot of main, a lot of common musical instruments, or any stable, consistent rhythm. But from there, it gets really detailed as to the precise frequency of any cell, any organ, any part of the body, in fact, any emotion. But not only the frequency, it's way more complex. It's the combination of frequencies, which is technically in music called timbre. So like we got a cell, that's one frequency, but an organ is a bunch of frequencies. It's a bunch of cells, right? Or the musical interval relationship between the parts, between two parts of the body, two cells, two people, two crystals, two planets, two plants, two of anything. But the highest level is the musical flow level. And that's really all about smooth flow. If you look at the body, it's really about smooth flow. Smooth flow without blockages is the definition of health, not only physically, but also mentally, because that's focus, but also emotionally. You don't want any chaotic stuck, or stuck vibrations in your body with emotions, right? But even spiritually, it's all smooth flow. Gratitude and compassion, they're pretty cool smooth flows. Universal love's happening. 
but this but source is the best smooth flow of all right so it's all about all these different levels of of music in the universe which is frequencies timbres musical intervals musical flows and you can work at all of those levels or any level some people just do frequency let's put a frequency of a tuning fork or a certain frequency on a body and and get that happening right for a certain part of the body or some people totally work at musical flow flows are the deal when you really get down to it it's all about smooth flow which is smooth flow of music right i mean you don't want a song that's like a little stressful in your body you want it to go right but the worst is the blockage da da ba da ah right that's the worst is full blockage so it's really all about <clears throat> from stable consistent to flow which is really when you get down to it it's peace peace physically mentally emotionally and spiritually when you're at peace your body works the best your health your immune system works the best it's proven you're more creative emotionally you're also more focused you're not bouncing around you're stable you're focused right and in the spiritual realm you're more at 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 peace and there's that stillness and stillness and peace is a portal to other dimensions where you're one with the universe right so that's kind of the basis of how sound works what a treat to have you on the show to hear your unique viewpoint as a medical intuitive healer i say there's really only four problems ever Blocks, congestion, resistance, or interference. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All of those are not flow. All of those are not flow. So you and I are in complete harmony as you are in, the, in our definition of what causes illness and what leads to healing. Now, David Gibson, how does sound work for accessing higher consciousness? Oh, boy. So... <clears throat> Part of it is there's there's a few things. I mean, first of all, we have to define what higher consciousness is because everybody's got their own ideas about that, right? I often think of it as simply running more gratitude, compassion, love, even joy, right? It's But it's also a deeper connection to your soul energy. But ultimately the best is a connection to source. Now, as far as source, I see source as all frequencies. It's not, in fact, I actually find using any one frequency or a crystal ball or anything that's one frequency, sometimes that can get me peaceful and get me there, but source is not one frequency. Source is all, right? So it's interesting. When you tune in to multiple things at once, like source, your brain actually goes into a state of theta, which is a rhythm between four and eight cycles per second. Na, 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 na. Everybody's theta is a little bit different. Some people's is a little slower. Na, 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 na. Some's a little faster. Na, 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 na. But it's all between four and eight, right? So you can actually find your rhythm of theta and play that so that you get into the state that you would normally be when you're one with the universe. 
I, now you can also simply tune in to multiple things at once, like sparkles on the water, right? Whoa, now you go into theta, or a bunch of sounds in a mix, whoa, right? Or a view, whoa, right? Or <clears throat> all of the harmonics within a crystal bowl or a gong. In a gong, there's thousands of frequencies. There's no way the left brain can handle it. The left brain goes, yeah, right, yeah, I give up. I mean, this is ridiculous. Too much, way too much information. So the right brain kicks in and you go into theta, into multiple things at once. So commonly, it's like just tuning into all the different sounds in a sound bath. But you know, nature is the best. Nature has it down. I mean, just all the branches and all the leaves on a tree. Whoa, you're in theta, right? You're on the way to that, that, that state of oneness. But a lot of people can go into theta and not go into oneness. I mean, in fact, when I ask people in my workshops, how many people of you have been one with the universe? It's only normally about a third. And it's about half of that that know how to access it at will, right? So there's a little, another aspect that, that is really important. First of all, getting it so that peace is the norm in your system. Mm -hmm. Because you're not gonna normally access these higher energies if you're uh, all over the place, right? chaotic vibrations or they're not, they're not good sometimes it can kick in spirit can go okay you're you're losing it we're going to help but normally that's not the case it's normally you got to go to peace right but the other is as many different people say is just asking asking for help right doreen virtue with all of her angel books she says the angels are just up there bored to death and they can't do anything until you ask, right? So it's, they're going, come on, ask, ask, ask. It's like, okay, can you help? Okay, then we, they get help. So you can ask for these higher beings or even your higher self or source directly and really set the intention for it to happen. It may take a while. I remember when I first, uh, the psychic told me years ago, universal love comes in through the thymus down into the heart. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to visualize that. And it took me five years before I was able to run energy of universal love through my thymus into my heart. And finally, I got it down. So it took a long time. But being able to run energy and set your intention and make it happen is the deal. And if, you, if anybody listening can't do that, set your work on that. I mean, when you can run energy, when you can run source, energy, you can also run it, by the way, down in, from the, uh, into the crown, down through your whole spine. I mean, there's many ways to bring in source. It doesn't, it, and, but once you just set your intention and practice it and visualize it until you start feeling the energy, basic ask over and over. And one day spirit goes, Okay, and it's like party time, bing! And when you're one with the universe, oh my God, holy moly. Okay, there's one other, oh, there's one other thing I have to tell you. I do a conference every six months. I've got 8,000 people come in. We've got done 14 international sound healing conferences. And there's this one guy I've had on many times, Jeffrey Martin, who is now using ultrasound, and he's found the actual frequency of microtubules, little nerve endings in the brain, He's found the actual frequency that he can resonate with ultrasound to bring you into oneness and unity consciousness in a lab every time and show with EEG when you're there. Holy moly, right? He, it's so successful, he's now doing classes on how to integrate oneness into your, your daily life. I mean, why get out of bed? 
right? <laughs> Why go to work? I'm blessed out. Universal love everywhere. Why move, right? I'm then you're homeless, right? Right. <laughs> so the deal is when you're one with the universe, there's no more anxiety. There's no more depression. There's no more PTSD. There's no more, no more, even dementia is overcome at that moment, right? There's, I mean, even autism. I mean, there's, it's, this is unbelievable. So really tuning into multiple things, asking and, and just even getting help. Sometimes you can ask and get higher beings will show up that will say, okay, here's the portal, bing, right? And so those are different ways, but really just peace is the way to start. Anybody can do that. And we've all got our own ways to do it. Sound is one of the most fun and really effective, right? Stable, consistent vowels and instruments. Thank you, David Gibson. And with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. And we'll be right back with Sound Healer David Gibson, this is Katherine Kerrigan, Medical Intuitive Healer. David Gibson, you've studied the use of sound healing for so many purposes. What is the hierarchy of vibration? That's really the, uh, what I was talking about before is basically the, the components of music. Because there's a lot of people that, you know, work with tuning forks, which is one specific frequency. And they say, okay, here's the frequency for this. Be, right, and then there's people that work with with uh, instruments like crystal bowls, Tibetan bowls, even the harp or gongs, which are a tonality, which are a bunch of frequencies called a timbre, right? Multiple frequencies, and they go, okay, this uh, Tibetan bowl's been hammered into its tonality with prayer over time, one tone, and it's like. Bing! you're opened up to, uh, you know, oneness even, right? But some people work at the musical interval level, the relationship of all the parts, right? Which is the beginning of music, which the next level is the flow level of music, really. And that can be in the melody, it can be in the rhythm, all the different components of music, whether it's chord progressions or a full range of aspects, which gets very complex. But the fifth level is intention. And true, the truth is, there's the, the four levels are, <clears throat> uh, you know, frequency, timbre, intervals, and music. And the truth is, even at the intention level, it's all about flow. Or it could be about stability. Let me give you an example. It's really intention is a whole nother level of the four. Because you could actually have an intention of love and hold that energy. You could have an intention of love wisdom, which is a musical interval relationship. You could have an intention of flow, which is source energy coming in through the crown, out the heart, earth energy coming up the feet, out the heart, and there's this flow of energy that you're holding the intention while doing. So you can do all the different levels at, 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 there, at that level. But it, it gets really interesting when you start looking at, say, remember I said cells are like frequencies? But you, if you zoom in on a cell, there's a whole flow system of energy in that cell. Even if you zoom in on one atom in the cell, there's a whole flow system in the atom. And we think of atoms as frequency. Or you can zoom out to all of the flow systems in all of the galaxies in the whole universe. I mean, oh my God, what an amazing flow system we have on this whole universe. And you zoom out far enough our universe is one frequency. 
And if and I could add to what you're saying, David Gibson, you and I are both nice people, but we're different vibrations. So I say to my clients, you're already a VIP. You're a unique vibrational interference pattern, right? So your energy is different from mine, just like your thumbprint is unique to you. Yeah, it's interesting. There's certain things that are archetypal that are common to everybody. And there's certain things that are completely different. Like what I do is for 10 years, I've been finding a person's rhythm, their metabolism, which is an average of the heart rate when you're at peace and the brainwave rate, which you don't have to average out, right? And that is your metabolism note. And then we give you CDs or downloads tuned to your metabolism and delta for sleep, theta for creativity and oneness, alpha for learning, beta for thinking and overcoming ADHD, and gamma for blessing out, tuned to you. And that's the main difference of what where people are different. In fact, you can see it. Some people with fat, let me put it this way. The first thing you see when you see somebody is how scattered or stable somebody is, mm -hmm. right? Chaotic or still, right? It's like, oh, a little too much coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Or spiritual leader, you're so mm -hmm. still, right? The second thing you see is how fast somebody moves. Mm -hmm. Some people move really slowly. Some move really fast. There's no judgment to metabolism. It's just your, your, your heart rate, right? And so people with a slower metabolism tend to be a little more heavy set. Not always. People with really fast metabolism happen to be a little thinner. Just, and that's because your metabolism determines your body type, right? And when you tune into that, now a lot of people say, and I believe, that that is your soul note. Mm. I mean, wouldn't it make sense that your soul note is where you're at peace in your body? Mm. Unless God's messing with us, right? So we can actually find your soul note of you. Now, some people talk about not just your soul note, your soul song, mm. that flow of you, right? But here, let me share something really, really important. <clears throat> so, uh, last year, my guides woke me up in, at four in the morning, which, you know, I was like four in the morning. Okay, that's when we do our work. Okay, fine. All right. And they said, this is how you're going to heal every disease in the world. I'm like, okay, go for it. First of all, we need to know the musical interval relationship between the heart, brain, and breath when you're in the zone. So I called up heart math and Rowan McCready sent me 15 readouts of the heart, brain, and breath in heart coherence, which is when you're running love in the zone, right? And we found when we analyzed them that they're actually octaves, exact octaves, which is double. So the, the heart rate, breath rate, and brainwave rates are exactly in sync, right? And then my God said, okay, well, then, then we got the rhythm, okay? Now we need to know the melody for each of the 11 medical systems in the body. Respiratory, circulatory, you know, all the different systems. I'm like, how are we gonna do that? Well, it just so happens John Stuart Reed has been using a, who invented the cymoscope that shows the little mandala patterns and water droplets. John Stuart Reed's been working with a device called the Raman spectroscopy, which is an electron microscope that will show the precise harmonic content of a cell scientifically in real time. So now all we have to do is use this device and we can measure the frequency, not only the note, but the entire harmonic content, all the frequencies of every cell in the body. So we find the, the notes, nodes, well first we've got to find the nodes where to measure in each of the 11 systems. And then we find the measure and get the notes. Let me give you an example. In meridians, there, each acupuncture is a frequency. And there are books that show the frequency of them. But I believe they're different from person to person. So when energy flows through that meridian, it's playing a song. Ba, da, da, at a very specific musical interval, uh, melodic uh, 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 transition, and a very specific rhythm. So that's what we're talking about in the 11 system. So ultimately, once we measure with the electron microscope and we get the EKG and EEG rhythm of each of the 11 systems, we've now got the entire melody and we can use needles with frequencies. 
we can use microcurrents and micro pads, we can use ultrasound, we can use scalar waves and run that river of flow through each of the 11 systems tuned precisely to you to heal every disease there is. Blo running the we're breaking through the blockages, right? Running the river of flow to break through every blockage that, that you just mentioned, right? But then we can use that electron microscope to measure all 70 trillion cells. And we get, but everybody's different, right? Everybody's, the frequency of all the cells is going to be a little different. That's why nobody's come up with exact frequencies for anything in the body. Because everybody's a little different. But here's the deal. I bet, and I bet a lot on this one, the musical interval relationships of the cells it's the same between us. And I've talked to many psychics and they said, oh yeah, that template of perfection, of harmony in the body, which is your, your, your physical structure, and mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual structure is the same. We all kind of look like people, right? It's, it's the same. So that relationship set it's the same so we can use that musical interval relationship set once we find your home note and resonate you into your template of perfection i mean if you get if you get this what we're talking about check it out pretty fast so wait 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 check it out this is the, the the if you get this what we're talking about is healing every disease there is everybody's got their own flows through the structure that's what makes us different right but we're talking about i mean this is unbelievable really i can see it now to be able to heal every disease there is because the basis of all reality is vibration there's nothing more more basic in physics, I was a physics major at UC Berkeley to start. The basis of all reality is vibration. There's nothing more more primordial. And once you figure that out and get the flow systems happen, it's, it's a done deal. Fascinating information. And with that, let's take another break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. You're listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, and we're hearing from sound healer, David Gibson. So David Gibson, sound healer, someone listening to this may say, okay, great. I understand that the basics of the universe is vibration. I want to use sound and music for healing. What are some basic techniques you can recommend for our audience for healing the physical body with sound? The most basic is any vowel. You don't even have to do it out loud. You can do it silently, right? Try it. Try doing it silently. Yeah, and you That's totally the feel that. Yeah. Yes. The second is do it with an intention. So say you're <clears throat> stressed about something, right? Could be personal, could be the world. Instead of just taking in that chaotic vibration, send love to it like this. You're not only sending that vibration out to the world, 
you're totally enveloping your whole being with that, not only the sound, but that energy of love, which is really good for your own system. So now you're not stressed. You're not <clears throat> just receiving, you're transmitting energy. So that's the most basic you can do is to actually, <clears throat> I mean, and it costs nothing. You don't have to buy anything, right? Any vowel, it's called toning. Just do any vowel. There's many other things you could do. I mean, if you can learn compassion, right? A lot of people, and people know it's cool, but they don't often know how to do it. It's probably the most important thing there is to learn. And there's many different, different techniques. I mean, the Dalai Lama talks about actually just seeing the other person as the same as you. They want happiness and not suffering just like you, right? Uh, but also the way I do it is I think, what brought that person to do what they're doing? And it's often, it's always, I should say, entrainment into the craziness and selfishness of our society for tens of thousands of years. People are lost because of the cosmic consciousness on the, or not cosmic, the, the basic consciousness on the planet. We get entrained into these patterns, right? We totally get to it. And, and I mean, if everybody was in love and light and blissed out everywhere you went, that's where we would be, right? But that's not the energy. So it's nobody's fault. And the energy of compassion, if you think of that, what that sound is, it's a low frequency. Right? Gratitude's pretty cool. I mean, if you can run a energy of gratitude, gratitude's actually one of the hardest, though. When somebody's hurting you, so to speak, because it's always so to speak, when somebody's hurting you or there's a problem, to be grateful for it is really tricky. But once you get that down, oh my God, there are no problems. There are no challenges and conflicts. It's all perfect. It's all growth. It's so all... Mm -hmm. so, so David Gibson... In my many years, my 30 years in experience in natural healing, one of the techniques, very simple, that I've learned for using sound healing is a technique called resonation. So we know in Chinese medicine, there's the five elements, fire, earth, metal, water, wood. And so, and you can tell me if this is right in your system, one of the ways to balance fire element is with laughing and you balance earth element by singing and you balance metal element by groaning you balance water element by crying and you balance wood element by shouting <laughs> what are your thoughts on that so there's the point is there's value to the the energy we can release in the sound of our voice there's really in in sound healing and basically in all healing there's really two <clears throat> main schools of thought one is you need your frequency or stability or as a remedy you need a frequency that will will be bring you back to you or peace or or change that chaotic frequency to a stable consistent vibration the second school of thought is you need all frequencies. You need a balance. And so the Chinese system is basically about getting a balance of frequencies, mm -hmm. right? Which is really cool. Very cool. Very detailed. I mean, I, I, I mean, we teach a lot of, about Chinese medicine in our classes. We, we've got 25 instructors at, at, in our in our. Uh, uh, state approved college that we have here so uh, for 20 years so so we, we got and also it, it just so happened we had the final uh, papers for the students and two people did it on Chinese medicine exactly what you're just talking about it's very very cool and uh, 
very deep tradition. So it's, it's really about getting that balance so energy will flow again, right? And it's so, it's not my system. This is a system of physics that goes through all systems. So if you look at, since the, the vibration is the basis of it all, you can apply it to any system. And it's still right there. It's why are you getting that balance of, of laughing over metal, right? It's to get back to that peaceful state of flow, right? It's still the exact same thing. You're trying to get back to that peaceful state of flow. And, and when you have balance, it's same as vitamin therapy, right? We also do voice analysis here. And it's exact same system. It's like we have you talk into a computer, we see what notes are missing. And when notes are missing, actually the person that created this program, she found that there are different diseases and physical and emotional issues that show up when notes are missing or too high, when there's not a balance. So we see what's missing and we give you a CD and you tone along with that, those notes that are missing to get the balance back in your system so energy will flow and you'll be healthy, happy, and, and blissed out. I love that. That's beautiful. Now, what are some techniques that you recommend for releasing stuck emotions with oh, sound? Oh, boy. First of all, the whole thing is to get over <clears throat> fear of making sound. <laughs> right and that can be that can take some time because you know as babies we were professional sound healers we had it down you know if you got anything going on emotionally you let it out with the sound Wah! with zero thought as to whether anybody thought you were weird or doing it right <laughs> right zero thought and then around one or two it's like shh shh and then you get in school and that's no more sound. You go to work and it's no more sound except around here, right? And then we lose that God-given ability to let it flow, to express ourselves, to let it flow, right? So first of all, it's about making just get silly. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Start, just do gibberish. Start making all types of sound. Start making the sound of how you're feeling. We do classes with three to six year olds online. And we're, it's like, you know, at first I said, okay, make the sound of how you're feeling. They looked at me like I had two heads, right? And after about two weeks of call and response, wee, make this sound, wee, woo, right? And then blah or ah, right? They were totally making the sound of how they're feeling again, right? And so then, Here's the main deal is if you have an emotion that you don't like because you got to remember and you know as a medical intuitive more than anybody emotions are 80 to 100 percent cause of all disease. I'm rolling my eyes. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. Totally. Right. Well, if that's true. Well, the second you have an emotion that doesn't feel good, you got to realize it's killing you. Short term, it's fine. You know, oh, that sucks. Ah! Okay, let it go. Let it go. There's a, there's a research project. One of my students came to me and he said, emotions only last 30 seconds unless you keep them going. Right. So, you, you know, but don't let, don't, as a lot of spiritual leaders say, we're not meant to feel bad around here. Don't allow yourself to continually feel bad by an emotion, right? So here's the deal, it's simple, really simple. They taught it to the kids, they totally got it down. First of all, make the sound of where you're at. Totally authentic, right? You're not trying to just make the sound. Okay, so say I'm in an emotion and we're gonna totally shift it to a sweeter emotion. Let me demonstrate, okay? Ah, that's a good one. Ah, chaotic, right?
the slower you do it, because most people can't shift an emotion. When they're in it, you're in the fire. I would say most people, 90% can't shift it. You know, I mean, sometimes they, they can do something over time, right? But it's, it's difficult often. If you make the sound of where you're at and slowly, it might even take five minutes or a half hour to slowly shift it to, you don't even have to shift it to love. You could shift it to love or gratitude or compassion or joy. Yeah, if you just shift it to a stable, consistent vowel of peace and slowly do it so it feels like it's changed. That is amazing, right? Because it's all about getting out of the chaos back to stable, consistent, which is the definition of peace. Here's the deal. Peace is a frequency humming consistently. Very powerful information. Now, David Gibson, again, is someone who studies sound. What is the sound of love? What does love sound like? <laughs> well, of course, it's different for everybody. In fact, you know, uh, Leonard Horowitz said 528 hertz is the sound of love. Right. And mm -hmm. then he uh, admitted years ago in a video, there's zero research behind that. So most people in the field have now abandoned 528, but a lot of people haven't got the message yet. And so there has been a field created around 528 because a lot of people are resonating that, but it's not real. It's not real. And so a lot of people have re resorted to 432. Woo! which is some people say is the heart meridian. I don't know how you measure that one, right? But, you know, it feels good, 432, and there's a lot of auspicious things about that frequency. But the truth is it's different for everybody, and there's two different uh, uh, frequencies of love for us. One is this. Try this. <clears throat> bring love into your heart. Everybody listen, and also bring love into your heart now. Come on, feel it completely. Okay. Now, silently go up and down in your head until you find a frequency or note it doesn't you don't even have to know what it is just until you find one that matches this sound of uh, this energy of love okay here's what i got okay now make it out loud right that's really cool because that's uh, if that feels right, that's your energy of love. And then you resonate that and it creates a stronger field, a strong field when you do the sound and the energy of love. There's another note of love that's really interesting, and that is your voice note. Everybody sings when they speak. Some people sing really interesting songs when they speak. Some people sing not so interesting songs, but they're still singing when they speak. Everybody sings, and just about everybody sings perfectly in tune. That means that you're singing in a certain key when you speak. The key that I sing in is... That's the key when I'm talking. That's where I'm at, right? And so what I've learned is when people express love, they commonly go to the home note of the key of the voice that they sing in when they speak. Here, let me give you an example. I really love my kitty. I love my kitty. I love my kitty, right? I wouldn't say, I love my kitty. I love my kitty. I love my kitty. Wait, what's wrong with your kitty? No, I love my kitty. Some people go to the musical fair. I love my kitty. But a lot of people go to the home note of the key of their voice. I love my kitty. Right? And that note is where we commonly express love. And more people speak in the key of D than any other note on this planet. Just a small bell curve, it's not huge. But if you want a choir to be able to sing, you do the key of D, because that's the easiest for people to sing in, because more people speak in D already. So D is expressed as love more on this planet than any other note. But that's not what it is. Everybody's different. The note in your head for your heart, we did. That's the cool one. Or the note of your voice. 
they're all different for everybody. Maybe there's a cosmic frequency of love out there in the universe, right? Who knows what it is? Maybe it's not even a note. Maybe it's a timbre. Maybe it's the, all the, the combination of frequencies of our solar system or our, our galaxy that's love. Maybe it's the whole universe combination that's love. That's not just one frequency. It, maybe it's all frequencies that make love, right? Because when we're one with the universe, commonly universal love is there, right? So, so that's, and so the sound of love is to get it in your heart and then just make it. You want to do it with me? Okay, let's sure. do it. I'm, I'm not a, much of a singer. People will use Oh, it. God, you get not over it. Get over it. You had it down as a baby. This is not singing. This is not <laughs> singing. We're not singing. Here, here's the, I've got a strict rule around here. You can never, ever do it wrong or mm. be off key. Mm. It's a very strict rule. Mm. Okay, just send, bring in love into your heart and send it out to the universe. Uh, 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 it was perfect. It was perfect. So then what is the sound of source? And I assume we're talking about universal God source. Well, we, that's why we, are, we already went over it. We went over it, yeah. Source is all frequencies. I mean, some people say that's universal love. I see universal love as just one frequency of source or wisdom as another frequency or, or you know, creativity, all these different rays coming out of source. Source is all, all frequencies, right? So it's interesting, you know, when people, um, uh, when it's interesting how people access source. How do you access source? I have a prayer practice. I, I start with the Lord's Prayer. Then I have a long list of people that I pray for every day. And then I talk to my angels. That's how I... <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cool. It's exactly what was said before. You basically, you know, ask for help, right? And, and it's, it's interesting because it's tricky to teach this to people that don't know how to do it. Mm. Once you got it down, you, I mean, now I can just go... Right, it's pretty easy, you know. So I mean, it's like the you know, room turns into white light, and it's like we right. But for when you don't have it down, I mean, people don't even know what it is. So, people and I have, a, I have a comment because uh, I have a technique that I use when I'm doing medical intuitive readings to get my ego completely out of the way, so that all of me is con totally connected to source, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. There are a lot of techniques for getting uh, to release a stuck emotion. I mean, you can make the sound of it. You can slowly transform it. You can actually make the sound of the part of the body that's holding that emotion. You can even call in higher beings. It's really cool. Okay, Hathors, come in, get rid of that, that emotion. Bing, right? Because sometimes that can get in the way. But, you know, once you get less attached to your emotions, then it's you don't really have to do as much releasing, you know, because I mean a lot, a lot of people are are really stuck in their emotions, in that 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 loop, right? That flow, that that actually not flow, it's it's a looping flow, and so, but otherwise, you know, it's really, again, the number one way to access source I I always teach is go figure out what you can do to get to a place of peace and stillness. Mm -hmm. Because generally, you're not going to access source if you're not peaceful. And generally, higher beings aren't going to come around if you're scattered. You need to be a stable, consistent vibration before they can tune into you or before they will tune into you. Very powerful message. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. We have been listening to the one and only David Gibson, and who is a master at sound healing. You can find out more about David Gibson and his wonderful work at several websites, soundhealingcenter.com, soundtherapycenter.com, soundoflove.com, 
And finally, soundhealingresearchfoundation.org. And remember, the simplest form of natural healing is sound. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.